What's up Ant fam? This is your boy John from Antmate, and sticking with the theme of providing some information, I thought let's cover a topic that's affected me quite a bit recently, and that's ant identification. More specifically, misidentification. So if you've caught yourself a queen, stick around, because I'm going to show you some mad tips on how to figure out exactly what you've got. But before we get into that, I want to give a shout out to my buddy Eli from Ant Invasion. We've been chatting for a few weeks on and off, and he recently mentioned our channel in a video, and it's done wonders for our subscriber count. So welcome to the family, and please check out his videos. We have some big plans for the future, so please subscribe to him. There's a lot of cool ants coming. He recently did a video on one of his ant colonies, so check them out here. He has some polyhatchis ants, and if you're an Aussie ant keeper, they're one of the rare ones. Everyone wishes they could get their hands on them, but enough for me. Check this out. The genus Polyrachis can be found pretty much all in Asia, parts of Africa, and all of Australia. The genus Polyrachis tend to create nests in open forest, woodland and parks. They generally make their entrances pretty noticeable. And just like Campanotis, they usually have one worker at the entrance of the nest. This guard gives access to a returning worker to the nest. So now that I've gotten my envy for his amazing ants out the way, let's get back to IDing some ants. This is something that's been on my mind a lot this week, as I recently managed to ID a colony that I haven't been able to for a very long time. And much to my surprise, I found out that we actually misidentified one of our other small families. The ferocious girls you see behind you, who are amazingly aggressive and always keen for a photo shoot, were sold to me as chromatic aster. Chromatic aster are the amazing acrobat ants that are well known for their pointed gasters. As you can see, they indeed have a pointed gaster, but after reading and some chatting with some of my entomologist friends, we suspect they're actually Nylandaria, which is awesome, and we'll have a video out on them soon. This is a case in point example of not taking something at face value. When you get some ants from someone, don't take their word for it and what they are. Do some research, look it up yourself and come to your own conclusions. Often you'll find people sell ants not knowing what they have or on bad information they've been given by someone else who really doesn't know either. This 10 worker colony of absolutely tiny ants are from the Ochotelis family which we only recently got an ID for. Their size means they're always happy to eat whatever I give them from the inside out. They're savage but hey, we wouldn't have it any other way. So, let's get down to identifying some ants. The biggest issue you'll come across are there are literally tens of thousands of different species of ants, and the smaller they are, the harder time you're gonna have IDing them. So, if you're new to ant keeping and want a practical solution to identifying ants, then Johnny's got your back. First of all, go where the ant keepers are. They'll be your first point of call for getting a positive identification. We have an ant keeping group where we have a few veterans from around the world and they're always happy to help a newcomer. So if you want to join our Facebook group, the link's in the description. Just request to join and you're in. Now that you have someone who can help you, it's important to help them help you. Post the best picture you have of your queen with the highest resolution camera you have to take it. We also need to know how big she is where you caught her, because ants from around the world are very different, and any other helpful information you can give us. That's it. We'll then try our best to narrow it down to at least a genus, and that's a huge step along the way to knowing how to care for your colony. If you're not one of those people, great! Let's take a gander at some ant keeping information that'll help you narrow down some ants. If we start by teaching a bro how to fish, you can usually have a look at what ants are in your area. Do a little bit of detective work. 
Look at the defining features of the genuses that are flying in your area at the date and time of capture and you'll have a much better idea of, of what you're dealing with. We're about to go through a few examples of exactly that. So first of all, there are a few big tells when identifying an ant and 90% of the 100 plus people who have asked us in the last month to help identify an ant have a really common species that we see over and over again. So, without further ado, the first big one with most of our fans is the Eridomyrmix family. And yes, Eli taught me how to say it. They're found mainly in Australia, some parts of Asia and the Middle East, and they're famous for their rainbow sheen when the light touches them. They have a very distinctive large propodom, which has this spike on their back. They are medium-sized queens and have eyes that are quite far away from their mandibles or jaws. We have two different Eridomyrmix species that we keep. Both meat ants, the Eridomyrmix purpuus, and rainbow ants, the Eridomyrmix bicnili. Have a look at our other videos on this channel where we've got a heap of footage of them. Next up is one of our favourites, the Campanatus family. These large fat girls can be found in most places around the world and are commonly known as carpenter ants. The usual dead giveaway that you have a campo queen is her single node on her petole and the evenly rounded thorax where her wings are or used to be. They're usually black or a dark red brown, but I've seen them come in all colors, so take that as you will. Now moving on to the amazing Laceus ants. These are the Eridomyrmics of the Northern Hemisphere. Laceus literally means hairy, and Laceus are quite hairy, and you'll find that the hair is evenly distributed around the ant's body. A Laceus queen will be around 9mm long, and she usually has dark red legs and antenna. Apparently, they also have a longer face than most ants, but I'd be surprised if you managed to identify one that way. Laceus queens don't have an extra segment between their thorax and gaster. So if your girl has one, she's not a Laceus, bro. Now we can go on for hours about this topic, but the best and most practical way to get an identification is to simply crowdsource the answer from veterans. I found that most ant keepers are great people and we have a strict no elitist policy that quickly weeds out people who are not interested in helping and would rather look down on newcomers. So come along, join the family, once we hit 100 members, we're going to run regular competitions and raffles, so there really is something for everyone. I have a lot of stuff coming for you guys, and we have a heap of new species on the way that we just can't wait to show you. Unfortunately, there's just not enough hours in the day, guys, and I'd like to thank Eli once again, and a few of my other friends that I'll link in the description from all around the world, stretching as far as India. They're all a great bunch of young ant keepers, and I'd do anything to help them out. So until next week and fans, we're probably going to try to do a video on our Nylandaria, which are really cool ants and I'm so excited to show you guys. But that's all for now, make sure you hit the subscribe button to stay in the loop, we'll see you next week.